Hey, welcome everyone to our talk show, NMP Talk Show. And uh, this evening, we're hosting our special guest, George Brooks, and he's from Texas, Dallas. Uh, George is a founder and CEO of Meta Association. He's a film producer at uh, Andy Costa Films and a former CASA advocate. He's a committee member of the South Dallas Employment Project and even coordinator for CCRC. George, you have epaulets of note. <laughs> George, how are you doing? Welcome to our show. I'm blessed. How are and you? Uh, we also have, I'm fine, thank you. We also have our uh, co host, Figile, who's also um, will be contributing a lot here. Um, just to warn you, George, Figile asks so, uh, ask a lot of questions. You know what? Just you, be ready you, you for wanted that. a warning, George. Today, George, I will be, I, I mean, after they gave out on who George Brooks is, I felt like yeah. it's time for me to shush today. So I will give you the platform to tell us who is George, what does George do? Um, you know, and uh, let me sit and listen. And I'll ask questions here and there, uh, but I won't say much. <laughs> All right, that's okay. So, welcome, um, our guests in on Telegram. And, um, so George, let's shoot, let's go into it. So, okay. who's George Brooks, except wow. what we have explained there with your epaulets? Well, my name is George Brooks, obviously. Um, originally from Memphis, Tennessee, I'm here currently in my hometown, but I do reside in Dallas. Um, I began to experience mental health issues about age seven and became self-aware of those pretty, pretty early uh, on in life. And my parents really endeavored to get me help, which was unusual at the time because um, typically um, black parents, black American parents were sort of, many were resistant to things like that, especially at that time. So uh, with my diagnosis, they didn't diagnose people at that age with what I've been diagnosed with, which is bipolar, PTSD, and DID. So unfortunately, I had to go through adolescence without getting the right kind of care. Uh, it was treated mostly as depression and nothing else. And as a young man, I developed an eating disorder uh, due to finding, due to self-medicating my mental illness. So I experienced a lot of childhood obesity and that coming up with the issues and with an interesting family life uh, kind of gave me an interesting insight into things. So I was diagnosed uh, officially with bipolar about 2005. I was about age 26, 27. Uh, my first son had been born. And from that point, I really worked hard to manage it. It took me really about a good 15 years after that to find a medication regimen that worked um, to get a better understanding of my mental illness and what I wanted to do. So during that process, I went through a lot of things. I went through addiction, uh, about an eight-year addiction to cocaine. I went through um, fractured mental health. I went through divorce, traumatic divorce, um, custody drama and all that. And I got to the point where I really was at a point where I wasn't suicidal, but my life was draining from me. And I left my hometown of Memphis after my divorce and rebuilt myself in the city of Dallas, which I will always be thankful to my, both my hometown of Memphis and the city of Dallas. And I started Meta Association. Meta Association's mission is to promote healthy mental health uh, among black men, but among all people, especially people of color, because we, we're disenfranchised and we're usually the, um, kind of ignored and underserved. So um, that's one of the things that we stand for, promoting black mental health. Uh, I've talked to a friend of mine who's a, who's a producer and director in Nigeria, Edwana Ayak, and um, she was telling me about how mental health was perceived in Africa and it broke my heart. Uh, it really affected me because what was conveyed was that it's not really treated, it's not really acknowledged, it's not really understood. And I thought about people there suffering that can't get help or won't get help because of the stigma, because of the perception. So one thing I'm trying to do is to come to Africa next year and film a documentary uh, on mental health there. Um, so that's something I'm, I'm working toward. So, um, okay. George, are you still there? Okay. We lost him uh, a bit. Uh, probably he'll yeah. rejoin. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, uh, it is Mam Khemi on the line. I, I just wanted to pick um, her brain on what George has said um, about mm -hmm. how mental health is viewed in Africa. Because, yes, we had um, the conversation prior, but uh, I, 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 um, I just wanted her to add on what George is saying, on how true it is, and uh, what is it that we can do to, 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 to deal with it better. Hi, Figile. Um, thanks for your, your, your question. I think what uh, George has just described, mm -hmm. to me, it's a, it's a chronological series of events mm -hmm. from the age of seven, eight years when the whole you know, mental health problem started. Mm -hmm. And when I listened to him, it, it, it then added a, a later diagnosis at the age of 26, 27, that's when he was diagnosed with bipolar. Mm -hmm. And then he took some time not getting proper medication. And then he went into addiction. He went to a divorce. He went to suicidal thoughts, you know, and, and, and. So what's happening here is that, uh, you know, mental health, if, if it's, not, it's not diagnosed early, it's not treated early, mm -hmm. it then creates a whole lot of issues that comes later. Mm -hmm. And those things then become, you know, make a person to be very dysfunctional because you can now see that, you know, with the addiction, the divorce, the suicidal uh, uh, situation, it was just adding more situation, more problems on top of whatever he was having. So coming back to your question, how do we then deal with this, especially in black communities? Mm -hmm. And I like your question because, you know, I, I've discovered in many times with the clients that I see, especially the ones based in communities that are called relatively townships, is that people don't wanna talk a lot about mental health or depression. Yes. They, they, they are going through it, but they, they don't wanna discuss it as such. They don't wanna describe it as such, mm -hmm. but they know they are not well. They know they need help. Mm -hmm. So as you deal with them and actually show them that this is what you're going through, and this, these are the causal factors of the situation you're going through, whether with, with some it's, it's anxiety, with some it's trauma, with some it's depression, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you find that there, there's still that thing that, that George talks about, mm -hmm. uh, partly is the stigma, partly the people think, you know, when you talk about mental health, you, you, you're saying they're crazy. No, it's mm -hmm. nothing to do with being crazy. Mm -hmm. It's a disease, it's a condition and you need to treat it, you need to be diagnosed, you need to have treatment, medical treatment, psychosocial therapy, so that you are able to deal with that before it creates all those issues that George went through. Because it, you know, one thing creates the other, the other creates the other. A, 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 a dysfunctional marriage to create divorce, divorce, create, oh my God, I, I'm a failure, I've lo you know, I, I failed. Then you have suicidal thoughts. A suicide creates another problem. So it's very important that when we create awareness in communities, in, in, in all society, in all class societies, because even different classes of society, middle class, upper middle class, people go through depression, they go through mental health. The rich go through that the same way. In actual fact, you will think that the rich goes through a lot of depression because with all the money that they have, some of that money they have cannot resolve all their problems because some are emotional, some needs therapy, some needs medication. So even with the amount of money that rich people have, they can it can never buy them. The peace of mind can never buy them healing. So we need to create awareness. We need to make people be aware in simple terms what is depression? How does it affect you? What are the symptoms? What are the early signs? How can you detect it? And then when you see those symptoms, try to get help, get diagnosed. If the doctor says, yes, you are, uh, you, are, you, you, are you, are, you are suffering from mental health, whatever type, because there are many of them, different types of mental health. George Swan is, he went through bipolar, mm -hmm. but you can go through depression. You can go through post-traumatic stress, mm -hmm. all those types of, of, the, of, of mental health. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we talk about them like we are doing with these shows, 
but we can also need to go and educate communities and tell them there's nothing to be afraid or to be shameful about this because even rich people go through that. Everybody Every person does. can go through depression. Yeah. You know, there's something that he mentioned, and I, 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 maybe Noah, you'll correct me if I'm wrong. I thought he was back uh, so that I can just confirm with him. He mentioned that yeah, he um, was it back, was yeah. actually um, diagnosed um, earlier. So he realized at the age, uh, at an early stage of his life, that he had a problem. But it wasn't properly diagnosed until it was already late. So I, I, I'm just trying. I, I, I think he was lucky to notice that there's something wrong because at the age of six, seven, I doubt if I'll be able to know that there's something wrong and uh, there's something that I need to do well with it, especially as an African person, you know. So I, I think he was lucky for him to 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 realize at an early stage, unfortunately, it wasn't diagnosed. Hence, he, he became an addict because he was trying to self-medicate because it was self-diagnosed and self-medicated, of which he could take um, wrong medication. You know, so um, do you think it's a case that could happen or that you have experienced in your profession? Well, not not particularly in my profession. Sorry, Mamkin, before you 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 answer the question, um, I, I, I at one point I was misdiagnosed as well, and um, yeah, you know, it, it, it's very important that when when you are diagnosed with some form of a disease, mm-hmm. um, you go to different doctors because if you go to one doctor, and that doctor had made a mistake, that could cost you your life. Yeah. And um, I know uh, at one point I was mis- misdiagnosed for two years to a point where I could not even walk by myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I spent most of my time sleeping and, 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 and just because I was misdiagnosed. And, and this only changed when I changed the doctor. Because that doctor, that day, I felt like, yo, this is the, the end of my life. Mm-hmm. I called in to see him. He was not available. And I said, any doctor that's available, that's when my life changed. Wow. The, the, other, the other doctor uh, found out that, no, I was misdiagnosed, changed the medication, all of that. Mm-hmm. And within two weeks, I felt restored. You know, um, I was able to walk by myself, you know, stand a little longer than I, I used to. So mi- misdiagnosis is, is very important. Mm-hmm. Uh, not not very important, not but being it's being misdiagnosed. But I get out. what you're saying now. That you know what, mm-hmm. um, it, it's better to get a second opinion. You know yes. whether you are diagnosed yeah. by whatever oh. condition today. Um, yeah. Get a second opinion or a third opinion. But I think yeah. um, it, it's a norm because if um, I'm, I, 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 I am in a certain profession and I'm being mm. diagnosed, they don't take only a a letter from one doctor it should be a letter from at least three doctors that will confirm the same diagnosis for them to say okay you are unfit or you won't be capable to do to perform your duties you know um, i I think what you're saying is really profound but mom jaimi what is it that you can add on that yeah, no, I think I think Neo is correct in the sense that uh, you can't rely only on on one one doctor because clearly if you have been misdiagnosed, it means you are going to get wrong treatment. Mm-hmm. It means the wrong treatment will be uh, treating the wrong condition. Mm-hmm. So it actually will make the the person worse than actually making you better because. Every condition needs to be properly diagnosed and therefore proper medication, appropriate medication be provided. So misdiagnosing patients, I think it's one of those bad, bad things. So definitely third opinion, three opinions are needed. I always say not only even with with, with your health, it could be with anything. If you take your car for, for, for some repair and they tell you this is the problem, Always find the second opinion, third opinion, because you know that if three opinions are, are, are talking the same thing, then you are being well diagnosed. Mm-hmm. So it's very important to 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 be the, not only to be properly diagnosed, but to be diagnosed early as well. Yeah. So going back to George's situation, I also wanted to ask him, 
How did you know at the age of seven and eight that he was probably probably having a mental health problem? Because at that age, you're still just a young boy. You know, how do you know? So I wanted him to maybe explain what was he feeling? What were the symptoms that then told him something was wrong, even though he was then obviously later diagnosed? So I also wanted to, to hear that, but unfortunately, it's not on the line. Yeah. So, yes, it's very important. The, 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 the condition must be diagnosed early if you can. But the problem is that how many of us knows that I've got a problem? Mm-hmm. And therefore, I need to go for diagnosis. I need to go and see the doctor. Many times, people are not even aware. They just know they are going through a, 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 a tall order in their lives. They, they don't know what's going on. Yeah. One thing is collapsing after the other. They can't function well. They're always sad. They're all, they, you know, they lose hope, but they cannot put a name in this whole drama that's going on around their life so once you go to a doctor i mean i had a client this week who came uh, the, the parents brought to this child and said we don't know what's wrong with this child so they couldn't identify the exact problem with the child but when i sit down and with the child and i start asking questions i could actually come up with a with a, with a diagnosis obviously not medical diagnosis but psychosocial therapy diagnosis that don't then told me that this is what is happening in this boy's life but the parents could not know you know what is good they could just tell me this is what he does you know so it's also the same thing where you find that uh, people are going through mental health problem but they don't know that it is mental health problem they just think ah you know it's just a crazy day it's just one of those weeks maybe things are not going on and and as i've indicated in one of our our, our shows in the past if that kind of feeling goes on for more than 2 weeks then you have got to see the doctor sometimes you just have a bad day a bad week it's okay but if that sense of feeling lonely, feeling a, a sense of helplessness, you feel like things will never get better, you are always depressed. If it goes on and on for more than two weeks, you need to go and see a professional so that you get diagnosed. If the doctor says, yes, you have got bipolar, then he will give you medication. Okay. If you have got post-traumatic stress, then he will give you the proper uh, uh, medication. But along that, you need to go for therapy. Yeah. So the two works together and you are able to be a balanced, functional human being. Because if you're only treated medically, you don't get therapy. You're going to struggle with your emotions, with your social uh, uh, activities, with your relationship, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You, you know, Mam Khemi, you mentioned something here and we know that um, our... Uh, um, our race and culture is not brought up in a way where we are aware of our mental issues you know a a lot in our society you mentioned earlier that if i am from um, a location a village mental issues are are not really recognized so now i'm talking to people out there uh, what is it that we have to be looking at to say okay i need to go and see a doctor for me to be diagnosed earlier or i need to take my child to a doctor so that probably they get diagnosis earlier about whatever mental condition they have if they have or if they do not have so what is it that we need to be looking at Sister Tandil, you Correct. can also uh, jump in if you have any any input on that. Mm-hmm. Okay, then I, I, I will. <laughs> There's still a question posed to Remy. <laughs> okay, uh, just to answer a figile, how do we know that maybe this person, this this adult? whether it's a man, it's a woman, it's a child. There are a couple of symptoms, symptoms or what we call early warning signs that you can look for. If, for example, it's a child, you find that generally how you know him or her, she's a talkative person, she always talks, she always converses, she's always with everybody watching TV, maybe in the living room. She's a participative child. And then all of a sudden you, you you realize now she's always keeping to himself or to herself, always in his bedroom, doesn't want to talk too much, just comes out and make food and go back to his bedroom. And uh, every time maybe you go to his bedroom, he looks sad, he doesn't want to talk. 
and then you you find that sometimes if even if he had to go to school it, it just feel like he needs to drag himself out of bed out of the house so when you pick up signs like that you know one mm-hmm. type of thing mm-hmm. so you need to then say wait a minute you know this is a, 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 a um Mandla, Mandla is not this way, the way we know him. You know, he looks very quiet recently, very, very distant, very removed, very isolated. And then whenever you converse with him, you just find a sense like, you know, th- th- this child is losing it, you know, hope and, and et cetera. So it's your responsibility to, to, to engage that person and say, I am observing some strange uh, traits from you. What is going on? Are you okay? Are you going through some something? Can I help you? You know, can 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 I be of help to you? And then you then listen to the response from that person. With adults, you will see where where, for example, they they now sleep a lot. A person is used to sleeping six hours. You know, maybe he's that kind of a person who wakes up at five. All of a sudden, he wakes up at eight. He's always late at work. He's always early coming back home. There's a there's a pattern of of, of eating. You know uh, that changes. He no longer eats the way they can either lose appetite or they eat more than they're supposed to eat. So you 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 look at those traits that are changing in that person. Those are the signs. Those are the early signs that shows you there is a problem here. But maybe even yourself, you can't put a a word on it. So you engage the person, ask questions, find out. Sometimes you may be like in a person who say, "I'm not okay." I feel like I'm going through this battle. I feel like I'm going, I'm drowning. And therefore you then say, okay, let's let's find out what is the problem. Let's go and see a doctor. And therefore the doctor will be able to take it from there. So you you observe those kind of things, you know, the excessive sleeping or less sleeping to the way that the person is normally used to, the quietness, the isolation, the the, the feeling sad, you know, those kind of things. You can pick up that. Mm-mm. There's something that is not okay. Uh, you normally you know the people that you live with yeah. that this is the character of Mandla, this is the character of my husband, mm-hmm. this is the character of my wife. As soon as things change, especially if they change for a couple of days, there's nothing wrong if somebody is moody for a day or so. But if it goes on and on for two weeks or so, then, then, then you need to stand up and say, mm-hmm. let's go and see. Yeah. The doctor. Yeah, you, you know, you, you're saying okay. that if you are lucky, I like that. If you are lucky, because um, Noah might not open up as my friend as he is, as my host as he is, may not be uh, feeling comfortable to open mm-hmm. up because he is a male and they feel like I cannot share my feelings. Uh, if I'm sad, if I want to cry, if if I'm going through some emotions, they, he might feel like, okay, no, I cannot share this with um, whoever because they might think I am weak. They might think, oh, maybe I'm, I, I am weak. Maybe they, it's nothing. So what, what is it that you can... Um, encourage men out there because i think as women it's easier for us to get the diagnosis because we talk and um we 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 are able i can speak to you i can speak to sister andy i can still even speak to Nero, but male um are, are scared and the, the society is not open for them is there um anything that they can do can I chip in a, a little bit yes, here? Please. Um, yes, please. Yes, please, stand. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. I've been listening and um, I get all the points and they are very uh, uh, helpful and constructive. Mm-hmm. Yes, how uh, mental health needs have risen. I mean... Before COVID, we did have uh, uh, mental health challenges. And George mentioned when he he was seven, you know, he he was he had some problems. Mm-hmm. So mental health needs have risen. Unfortunately, mental health services have been severely disrupted as well because it has uh, affected even care workers, Mm -hmm. you know, even legal representatives, Mm -hmm. people who are really helping societies, I mean, social workers and professional nurses, doctors, we do have 
few psychiatrists uh, uh, who have committed suicide as well. So it just is another is another problem. So the what, how do we help people? Uh, this is just an additional on what uh, Remy has been saying. Mm -hmm. It means families uh, must get involved here just to listen. When we say, talking about men, what do we do? Mm -hmm. The moment they start to open up, or even if they just say a little, do listen with an open mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let us not be judgmental. Let us listen with an open mind. Mm -hmm. And we don't make comments such as, hi, man, cheer up, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because if this person now wants to talk, even if it's just briefly, but let us, let, let us be broad and do ask questions. Because if a person has started to talk, just do a, ask relevant question. However, it's important not to say, I know how you feel. Because nobody knows how people feel. And uh, maybe then encourage to seek uh, health professionals in, 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 indirectly, politely, because most of the people say, oh, you think I'm mad. I'm mad now. Yeah. You know, yeah. but encourage to seek health prof professionals, you know. And maybe if you realize a person like it has been said now they are like in their rooms they just take food go to room most of the time their places are untidy you know they don't clean clean up the way they just help mm -hmm. with their tasks mm -hmm. say oh today can i just do this for you can i just do this for you mm -hmm. we need to 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 help them but we the, uh, the other thing we need to not to ask their medical decisions we don't have to question no no we don't need to question their medical decisions mm -hmm. because it's sensitive but the moment they go to health professionals let let the health professionals handle that mm -hmm. and when she he comes from there or she comes from there don't say what do they say now what do they say? unless a person is voluntarily saying this is what they said to me. So they, mental health need a lot of, of help. I was thinking the other day, I mean, COVID came and there was a lot of help worldwide from government and stuff. Mental health is another pandemic. We need to help. We need to talk about this. Chemis is, is, I, I tell Chemis point. We need to help people in this regard, we mustn't take it lightly because it's it's another pandemic. It's or oh, epidemic. It's 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 killing a lot of people. For mm. example, for example, yeah, impact of COVID on mental health cannot be made light mm -hmm. because it affected adults. It affected youth. Mm -hmm. Millions fell below poverty line. Mm -hmm. Business mm -hmm. went and crapped. You know, when you move around, you can be in Johannesburg, can be in Cape Town or the big cities, Port Elizabeth, shops have closed. So people are not working, people are not earning. earning. Mm -hmm. So economy has been affected. Societies, I mean, lot of separations and all that. More especially, it has disturbed the learning processes. Mm -hmm. Our young ones are disturbed. You know, because it disrupt the 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 education part of it. So yes, we need to uh, help, but there's a way. I, I I always ask myself, how can the government really get involved? Because even health professionals now are affected. Mm -hmm. How can we take these things serious? I last week I mentioned that I'm a radio person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. SAFM now, as I was driving, rushing for this show mm -hmm. at about news at six o'clock, mm -hmm. it says, as young as eight years, our young ones, young ones are into drugs. Sure. Eight years. Sure. So it's another cause of, of another additional mental health challenges. 
So this needs, Remy is correct, awareness, 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 and then treatment. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I just think on, to, uh, to add on top of what you are saying, Sister Andy, um, it, it is other than awareness, I think we need to change our mindsets as well. I think George mentioned this, um, this stigma that comes with mental um, wellness or mental illness. Um, you, you know, I think as mm. individuals, we need to change our mindset. If somebody suffers from depression, anxiety, uh, bipolar, or whatever co mental condition they have, we shouldn't be looking at it as a as leprosy you know you can't touch you cannot be closer to that person because of their mental um uh, illness you know i think that's what is a hinder I, I cannot be open enough to talk about my mental um illnesses to any of my friends to any of my 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 colleagues because i am afraid that the minute i mention that um I, I was diagnosed with bipolar people will look at me differently and I, I cannot talk about it. Mm. People will experience when they see the episodes. And uh, again, the minute you see the episodes, they start talking badly about me. And it's going to impact or affect me in a way as well. Uh, to jump in yeah, there, um, Sister Andy, mm -hmm. what, yes, what yes, I um, actually wanted to ask as well uh, regarding uh, assistance or help regarding men mental um, health um, awareness. In the law fraternity, is there an, an organization where lawyers could go and, and, and seek um, help, you know, for their mental wellness? Because they stand for um, gruesome crimes. You know, they represent people who have, have gone through... <laughs> You know, a lot of things that um, you really need to be uh, fixed in your mind and emotionally. So, oh. uh, to your experience, um, is there any form of an organization that helps them to cope with it? Oh, you mean like debriefing, you know, like so that they can be assisted? No, no, I, I don't what, know. Mm. What I mean is, uh, yes, they, they, yeah, yeah, it's uh, uh, you'll call you, you'll add on this, yeah, it's called debriefing, you know, so that they they are being helped because you mm. know they hear stories and mm. they cannot share them with their families, mm. they must keep themselves, they must keep that information within themselves, mm. uh, other. Uh, uh, and there's a lot of there are a lot of acts. Then it's going to be you didn't do right. You were not mm -hmm. you know there are a lot of acts going with that. They, I don't know any organization at the moment. I don't say it's not there. Mm -hmm. However, um, uh, last year August uh, we initiated um, some a program for legal representatives. They, 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 they were interested um, in the Black Lawyers Association. I remember I did the presentation. They were interested in doing that. But as you know, most of the things need finance. So we are in the process of doing that as at least, um, I've got two heads as health professionals to work with legal professionals in dealing with health challenges. That's a good question, and Neville, you asking. They they really need it. If you remember, there was a time during COVID when this young legal representative was not being polite to the judge. You know, he, he, he the communication with the presiding judge was not ethical. So you could realize that maybe he's worked up somehow, he's anxious, he's disturbed, you know, maybe he's not winning the case, but the presentation, as a lawyer, you are taught how to communicate with people, even if their matter seems to win. So you don't need to, um, to use words which are not supposed to be used in court. Mm. 
but that guy did that. I'm mentioning that because it was viral, it was in um, on social media, and then is then that I confirm your question. Legal professionals themselves need prof- uh, uh, help, mm-hmm. and I, I, I'm happy because when we did this presentation, we had junior legal, uh, lawyers, we have. We had um, advocates, we had, we had judges, and they said, I think we need this. I don't know of an organization or an NGO which is specifically dealing with legal professionals. However, our uh, Women in Health uh, um, organization is, is in the process of putting that together. Mm-hmm. That's very interesting. Thank you for, for that. Um, I was trying to reconnect George uh, yeah. using Zoom. Um, we're still battling. I, I, I think it's their connection that side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. But anyway, yeah, we this men- yeah. mental health is, is is a challenge. You know, the young uh, young people are left vulnerable to social isolation. You can call it disconnectedness. Mm-hmm. They they are just lost mm. because. If they see themselves acting in a way that which is not accepted, <clears throat> they ask themselves, "Why am I acting like this?" Then they self-medicate using all these illegal medication. Mm-hmm. So it needs to be attended. Mm-hmm. So it means everyone. You are a professional. You are a student. You are just a person who's and not employed. Awareness and attention. Mm-hmm. Maybe we can ask Femi to go and talk to the president. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking of her. I think that's the only person we've got on our platform who's in the right standing to say, "Look." This is a what I can propose for, for, for the community out there. And where to from here, you know? <laughs> Mam Khemi, what are you saying about this? Sure. I think I think I agree with all of you. I I I I I agree with Nell's question in terms of the legal fraternity, whether you know they are being provided with services because the kind of work, especially in courts. You can imagine if you are a lawyer representing somebody who have murdered somebody and he tells you all about it as his lawyer. So it, it can be very traumatic even to the lawyers themselves. So, And I want to, to add to Tandy that I believe every profession, yeah. you know, it doesn't matter which profession, you know, mental health, it's everybody's business. So you are a doctor, even myself as a social worker, I could have those episodes where maybe... I go through depression. So it's not a condition for certain people or for for a certain class of people. It depends on what's going on in your life. You know, what are the causal factors? For some person, it could be he lost his job. He's a breadwinner. Now he has to face his family. He doesn't know how to provide for them. You can have depression. You can have mental health. It's a woman who probably, you know, who was pregnant, looking forward to a baby, and then she lost the baby. It can take her to a post-traumatic stress, you know, and and a long-term depression. So it's everybody's business. So there's no, it, it's not a disease for certain people. And I think, you know, it's something like Tandy saying, mental health, it's a, it's a pandemic. It's, it's yet another pandemic and after COVID because we, we before COVID, we, as, a, as a country, we're going to of unemployment. And then COVID came. Those people couldn't work, couldn't go to work. And people were working online. And after COVID, now it's minimizing. Now we're having electricity problem. The electricity problem that is closing businesses of people, people that are earning income from those businesses. So it becomes a cycle that some of this at, at family level, you don't have control over because there are societal issues, there are government issues. But at the end of the day, they come and affect you at your community level, at your family level, at your individual level. Mm-hmm. And they make that we we should not only do deal with it only by ourselves we need to have ngos organizations coming government departments pulling the government how can we deal with this pandemic all of us 
as practitioners, as, as legal practitioners, as health practitioners, as media, you know, mm -hmm. so that we spread the word, share the knowledge and say, look out, look out for your neighbor, look out for your family member. If she's going through these signs, then maybe there's something that you can assist. So it's, it's really a, a project on its own that we need to work on it, all of us, from wherever we are based, whatever profession we are in. It's just like health in general. Health, it's everybody's business. We all get sick at one point or the other. So mental health is also one of those things. Mom you, 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 uh, I think you're nailing it on the head. But then there's one thing that I've realized, and uh, I don't know if you, you will agree with me. Uh, mankind has tried everything possible, mm. but they're not getting mm. any, anywhere. It's even getting worse and worse. So, so my thinking on this, on these matters, is why, why do we have to go big if we can sort out the small things? Mm. Um, there's an expression that says charity begins at home. Mm -hmm. that, exp that expression is, is more powerful than any other thing that a president or somebody in power can suggest. Why I'm saying this is if I start taking care of myself, right? Mm -hmm. It will be easier. Mm -hmm. It will be easier for me to take care of somebody That's else. Yeah. Absolutely. But if I can't take care of myself, how will I sort out your problems as Mam mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so if, if we start True. from the drawing board, charity begins at home, we can get some way. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately mm -hmm. even that some way will not get us anywhere. We have we have uh, moved away from the mark so far of it that we can't even go back. We just need God's kingdom, obviously. Uh, that's an it, amen it, to it, that it, one. I was cool. about to say that. But while we're waiting for yeah. God's kingdom, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is it that we are doing now? I think what you said now was profound to say it begins at home. I need to take care of uh, my mental health myself yes. before i can say i can take care of the next person whether it's your child whether it's your spouse yeah. whether it's um your neighbor if you are not well yourself you cannot um give anything mm. to the next person but there's one thing i believe in you know the, the like you said the first step is it with me if i'm done with me i cannot heal the whole world but if I can mm. actually lend a hand to my neighbor with one person and she pay it forward, I think as mm. a society we can go far. Because I, I think what hinders us the most is that we want to, 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 to heal the whole world, of which it's going to be impossible for us. And we can start small, one person at a time, you know, and let them pay forward. We can get somewhere as, a, a, as human beings. Figile, so correct, so correct. It's it, it's about you dealing with yourself at your individual level. Because if 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 you create awareness to one person because you are well, the other person will create awareness to the next person. The next person will do, and in no time, 10, 20 people mm -hmm. will know and be able to be healed because of that touch of one person. Mm -hmm. So as an individual, you can make an impact to many people because you touch one, the other one touch the other one. Mm -hmm etc etc mm -hmm. so that's basically how we contribute to each other in families in communities you know in churches etc it doesn't have to be a big thing but at your own space mm -hmm. you yourself once you're healed you can be able to share and say i've gone through the same situation mm -hmm. and this is how i did because 
you know, experience is always the best teacher where somebody says, actually, I've been where you have been. Mm -hmm. I've gone through the same depression. This is how I got out of it. And, you know, earlier on, we talk about men not speaking because men by their nature, you know, how they are, they are taught to be strong, they're taught taught that they're men, they're providers, they're the head of the family. So they can never be seen as weak. The reality is that we are all born human beings at some point point you're going to get weak but I would also like to say if 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 you know discussions like this shows like this continues whether we are we are reaching to many people uh, as much as we should be I'm not sure but you know even if you have role models people like Neo who are able to talk to other men and say there's nothing to be ashamed of this is a condition this is something that we can all talk about and share and you don't have to feel like it belittle you or it degrade you or you're no longer a man enough just because you're going through a depression because if you're going through a headache or nobody says you are you are weak because you're going through flu flu it's 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 it's, it's for a specific gender no it's the same thing a woman can have flu a man can have flu a man can have depression, mental health, a woman can have the same thing. So we need to start spreading that message. There's nothing to worry about, but mental health should be everybody's business. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. No, thank you so much for, for all these inputs. They, they, they're really helpful. And um, I'm confident whoever will be listening to this recording uh, will benefit one or two things out of it. And um, unfortunately, we are not able to reconnect with our guest. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's uh, his line that side, uh, internet that side, or, or what's happening. Yeah. But um, uh, Sister yeah. Andy, I think you, you have something yeah. to say. Yeah. yeah, maybe by miracle, uh, George will come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, the other thing when we're dealing with ourselves, I include myself and other people, mental health is not an easy uh, situation or condition because when you're dealing, we're dealing with mental health challenges, that individual might, you'll want to help, maybe you're a family member or you're a spouse or whatever. They have a tendency of pushing you away. Mm. or even worse, upsetting him, say, saying things that will really break mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. You know, they, 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 you know, because now they have this avoidance or like denial, you know, I, I'm, I'm fine. They, they will push you away or upset you. And if, if you are upset, you must have a way of dealing with that. In our mind, you must know that this is the type of a person I'm dealing with because people tend to take difficult feelings out on those closest to them. Yeah. So that's the, so when we're helping them, we must know that the, those who are close it can be a mother or father, a sister, a brother, a cousin, or a close relative or a close community person. They will say upsetting things. Mm-hmm. Again, I would like to repeat, people tend to take difficult feelings out on those closest to them. Mm-hmm. So they may do all those things, then it, it, it might be hard to assist mm-hmm. them. But I like what Neo mentioned that we need to deal with ourselves first so that we can be able then maybe to try we, we are not specialists, we are not doctors, we are not experts, but is to understand that um, mm. they, might, they must upset us or even hurt sometimes. Mm-hmm. But then uh, uh, Femi will mention, will, will know better because then when they start to hurt, then that's when then uh, maybe throw stones or try to to uh, to be violent. That's when it mm. can be re- reported to 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 police because then it's an incident. It can be re- to, to be reported to police because if it's reported, then that's then the the health professionals, the person can be admitted at a hospital. 
and then help can start like that. So if they start to be violent, then yeah, our SAP can can assist. Mm. No, I just want to you are you are making, you are making such a yes. Oh, uh, I you, want you to can proceed. Maybe uh, maybe you will mention it in your response. Yes, um, um, I want to say that what Tandy is raising, it's a very, very, very important issue mm -hmm. because, you know, you know, as we say, normally when you are living with a person who has got those signs, you must try to intervene, you must try to help. However, what Tandy is saying is very important in the sense that sometimes when, when the level of depression is so uncontrollable in them, they can take out their pain on you. Mm -hmm. And the question is, how then do you respond mm -hmm. when you are the other person whom all of these things are being taken out on you? Because you yourself, you're still a human being. Mm -hmm. You still feel the pain. Sometimes it can be so hard even on you that they can say bad stuff to you. But remember at that time, you are trying to help them and you are trying to understand their problem. But by taking it out on you, they can be the most difficult difficult people at that time. But what you then realize that the following day, those emotions have changed. You find the mm -hmm. person is, is, is normal, is, is, mm -hmm. is, 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 is gone back to his normality. And then you're like, mm -hmm. okay, this is how I know this person. But hey, yesterday, no, yesterday it was something else. Mm -hmm. So is that thing, how do you deal with them? Obviously at the beginning, you are not going to be able to understand. You yourself are going to feel like you are a victim. Now you are the victim of the person who is going through depression. You may not understand, but over time, you're going to get used that, oh, okay, whenever he or she is like this, I must know she's going through that swing that whether it's mood swing, that bipolar, because bipolar people is that today they can be the most extremely happy people, tomorrow they're the most extremely sad people. They move in extreme. So how do you deal with a person like that? Yesterday you were with him, he was extremely happy. Tomorrow it's something else. He can even swear at you. So it's very important what Tandy is saying. How do you as a person who is helping the other person gonna cope when he takes this home? It's a very wow, thank you yeah, very much. Before, um, I'm before that, we understand that <laughs> just uh, not even a minute. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Remy. Uh, I just want to add uh, uh, as well on what Remy has just said. The other thing a person can blame oneself. Let's say Remy is trying to help me, and I'm like, you know get off on, um, on blaming. So Hemi can blame herself for the way I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's trying to help mm -hmm. me, but Hemi can blame herself. Uh, there's, a, there's a feeling of helpless and frustration mm -hmm. that you can't help because of how they feel. Yeah, but absolutely. they're the brand for their emotions and anger. Very true. Thank you so much for that insight. Um, it's a jewel. You know, um, we needed to hear this. Everyone needs to hear this. And um, hopefully it will make a difference in their lives and how they view mental wellness or mental health illness of any sort and um, how, to, how to help those that, that are in need and how to also identify, especially at an early stage, that you, you, you get your treatment. So thank you, Mam Khemi, uh, for your advices. We really treasure your advices. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sister Tandi, also for joining us. We also treasure your advices. You know, we, we, we have professionals in, in, in our arena. Yeah. I mean, our arsenal is, is yeah. 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 <laughs> if we have to you? blow our own horn, yes, I agree with you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you for supporting the Omar um production and uh, NMP talk show. Um, with with your comments and thank you for my co-host Figile uh, for taking time also to you know advertise the show and uh, get us more people to to interview we really appreciate it but we've come to the end of our show and um, tomorrow which is a, oh, oh, not tomorrow but on a Monday we do have another show that speaks of um, matriculate matriculants you know they they receive their their results now some are 
a positive, some um, you know, a negative, and how do they deal with it? Especially those that are um, are getting frustrated of what they they have you know um, gotten as a result. So we do have professionals that will be joining the show to to tell them how to deal with the situation. Uh, where to go to, which um, platforms to to join, so that they can improve themselves, and how to view themselves um, w- regarding those uh, results that they have received. So that's a, a lineup for Monday's show. We hopefully uh, hoping that Sister Andy and you, Mam Khami, will also be joining us on the show. You're more than welcome. Um, we'll give you the keys to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, Remy, and uh, Sister Andy, they are part of our furniture. Without them, we they might are. not have a show. So, yes, we will have them next Monday here. Thank you very much for tuning in. And we are looking forward to Thank what you. we've got on, in store for everyone. Thank you very much, Mom, yeah. Remy, uh, our host and producer, Neom Rabedi. And um, to our guest and speaker, uh, Mom Tandy. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you on, yes, on Monday. Thank you. And we also want to extend a thank you to George. Um, unfortunately, with this connection, he was, able to, he was not able to reconnect, but we really appreciate his input as well. Mm-hmm. So this is Naomi Rabedi, the host of, your, of this talk show, and this is how we're signing out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>